The exact origins of the term drag are unknown, but many people believe it originated a few hundred years ago when men would wear elaborate dresses, including hoop skirts that dragged along the ground behind them, thus drag. In today's day and age, the term drag almost always refers to elaborate costumes, makeup and performances, generally lip-syncing, of men dressed as women or women dressed as men, drag queens and drag kings, although drag queens are much more well known. The term queen was adopted by the drag movement, reclaiming one of many homophobic slurs, such as fag, that men would call gay men to shame them, drag and queen. Drag has no direct correlation with gender identity or sexual preference. Men or women who enjoy cross-dressing for personal preferences are sometimes called cross-dressers or transvestites, but they aren't generally considered doing drag unless they are performing. And men or women who perform in drag are not necessarily transgender, although they could be. Drag or cross-dressing performances have been popular across history. A few examples. Men dressed as women during Shakespeare's time to perform roles on the stage. Elaborate stage routines were performed by men in dresses during the Wild West era in the United States for entertainment. And men dressed as women has been a staple plotline through many eras in the theater, on radio, on television, and in movies. Think of Robin Williams and Mrs. Doubtfire as one of thousands of examples. Many famous people, such as J. Edgar Hoover, were believed to have been cross-dressers, and there are entire industries for male and female impersonators. In the 1920s, gay men in big cities began holding what they called drag balls, where many in attendance would dress in women's clothing, and the balls spread worldwide. This was often referred to as the pansy craze. In time, these balls were considered more taboo, and performers and attendees were frequently arrested, causing the balls to go further underground. Drag was considered acceptable so long as it was for entertainment purposes only, though it was seen less frequently during the decades of conservatism in the United States. Drag queens have always been frequent staples in gay bars across the country and around the world, both for inclusion and for entertainment and many drag queens were present during the famous Stonewall Riots, when LGBT people stood up publicly to violent police raids and started to finally change perceptions of the LGBT culture, which had been associated with being hidden and underground. In the last 10 years, drag has become much more mainstream, particularly with the advent of the insanely popular RuPaul's Drag Race, on which drag performers battle it out in a reality competition to be named the next drag superstar. Drag queens are common in many clubs, shows, and venues as singers, hostesses, comedians, or performers, particularly in gay clubs, but in other areas as well. I'm excited to launch Drag Week here on the LGBT Snapshots page, and as always I invite you to please share these videos with your friends, like them here, and subscribe on the YouTube channel so we can get this word out to as many people as possible. Thank you for watching.